Hi everyone, my name is Priyakshi and today we are speaking to Bhakta Keshavachar, co-founder and CEO at Chara Technologies. So Chara is developing EV motors that don't use rare earth magnets. We want- What are the possible paths away from heavy rare earth dependency of EV motors? Yeah, a great question, Priyakshi. We know the problem of rare earths. I think we we will let that pass. Uh, yeah. It's expensive, difficult to mine and extract, and one country has 90% control over the supply chain. So there are three ways to solve this problem. Uh, number one is that we also start mining, extraction, and making the rare earth-based magnets, which is what the government of India has announced a, a, almost like a billion dollar uh, scheme to support those three operations, which uh, we believe every country, every society in this world should do, especially as, as we are moving into an electron economy. We should also remember that rare earths are not only used in the magnets which go into the motors, they are used in a other variety of other applications, medical electronics, um, defense applications. So rare earths are needed, uh, semiconductor processing, so rare earths are needed. I think that is a great thing the government of India has done. Our number two uh, approach is that we can start looking at making magnets without using rare earths, powerful magnet without using rare earths. So if you look at um, uh, Nyron Magnetics in uh, Minnesota, um, uh, US, they are working on iron nitride magnets. Uh, Europe is strongly working on potassium strontium magnets. Uh, and hopefully we will see magnets as powerful as this rare earth magnets uh, sometime in the future. Uh, anything that is close to material science chemistry takes about a decade to get into production. So it's like a little bit far off. The third one, we believe as technologists, as engineers, that every problem has a technology solution. And so we we look at motor technologies, architectures, which don't use rare earth magnets. So there is reluctance motors. There is uh, externally excited synchronous motors and maybe some far out technologies. We believe that the the last approach, uh, the technology solution will be good for at least a decade and a half. And anyway, it's very strong to predict what happens after a decade. Yeah. So what is the technology that you are using in your yeah. motors? Correct. So uh, we are, there is a technology called reluctance motors. Uh, which is fairly well known. We did not invent it. Uh, it's actually the original paper goes back to like 200 years ago, like 1835 or something, um, when man invented electricity and magnetism. These are the first motors that were proposed. But these were not built because they had a bunch of issues. Uh, one is that they're highly nonlinear, difficult to control. They had power density issues, torque ripple. Uh, but now, because of the need for a sustainable and efficient motor in large quantities, uh, because of this energy transition. Now, a lot of companies, including us, are looking at this various alternate technologies. We started Chara. Chara stands for motion in Sanskrit. Uh, uh, we started up six years ago uh, during COVID. So happens to be during COVID. And we said uh, we need to f- solve the following three problems. Number one, uh, we need a sustainable motor. Number two is that we need to get away from the dependency of critical uh, minerals on a foreign country. The third one is something that's closer to our heart. Motors and controllers of whatever kind are still not very well designed in India. A lot of them are imported. A lot of them are done by the large MNCs in India. We wanted to build the Bharat motor. So we wanted to do, do everything from first principles. And that's what we have done over the past uh, six years. And now uh, we are entering production and deployment phase of our uh, Radar 3 motors. Right. So, uh, otherwise, the most prevalent kind of motors that is being used is the PMSM. As your technology stands today, how does it compare in terms of performance, efficiency and cost? Can you give us an idea where do you stand? Right. Yes. So, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Pretty much all motors uh, that are used for mobility or traction, from the smallest e-bike to ULU to Aether to Tesla, they all have the same motor. They all have run by the same magnets. They work really well. They are the best motors, uh, I think, which we can do in this world today. Uh, Our motors, uh, which we are now producing in our own factory and selling all the way from 6 kilowatts to 30 kilowatts, 
um, they are as efficient, if not slightly better. What is called as duty cycle efficiency is better. Peak efficiency matches PMSM motor. Performance in terms of torque and power, we match the PMSM motor. Uh, there's not an issue. Uh, and uh, cost-wise, uh, today, if you look at the PMSM motor, 40% of the cost of the motor is consumed by the magnets. And so what we do is we remove the magnets. We add a little bit more steel and copper. Uh, so we are about 15% uh, plus or minus 5, depending on the size of the motor, uh, cheaper than a, um, a PMSM motor. Okay. You're saying you are cheaper than a PMSM motor of equipment yeah. performance? Yes, with the same performance. All right. Then in that case, is there any other trade-off that doesn't work in your favor, like maybe size or weight? Yes. So we are dealing with physics. We are we have removed a very powerful magnets and we've added more steel and copper to compensate for the flux. So the extra steel and copper adds weight uh, and size. They are related. So our motors are typically 10 to 15% heavier than a comparable PMSM motor. And this is a known fact. Um, and this is not a problem. Where, uh, for example, if you look at a, a three-wheeler motor, which is our most popular uh, selling motor, uh, it's like a 6 kilowatt rated, 10 kilowatt peak, 48 to 96 volts. Uh, a comparable PMSM motor, and we have done the comparisons, is about 15 kilograms uh, from well-known companies. Our motor is 18 kilograms, that 15% uh, difference. That, that is a given. Otherwise, uh, everything is same and we are a little bit cheaper. Now, uh, if you look at the gross vehicle weight of the three-wheeler uh, vehicle, it's about 750 kilograms, okay. an auto rickshaw. So this 3 kg out of 750 is a very small number. Mm -hmm. So it was all in the people's mind that this, this motor is heavy uh, and all that. But now I think, uh, fortunately, because of the geopolitical uh, tailwinds, mm -hmm. uh, people are looking at uh, saying that, okay, you know, I know it's a little bit heavier, it will not make a difference. And so they are, uh, they have started using, there were a couple of companies who are already homologated going into production. We are at the beginning of this technology transition into reluctance motors. We will also become better. We are already doing our version 1.5, which will bring that 15% down to 10%. And hopefully we'll get it down to 5% where it won't make any material difference to the end application. If you look at the uh, uh, two-wheeler motor, you know, we have taken a standard ether, removed the motor, uh, their existing motor and fitted our motor. Anybody can come and take a ride. You won't see any performance difference. We've shown it to the ether folks also. Uh, so there we were able to fit the motor. Our motor is about uh, uh, six millimeters long out of uh, about 140 millimeters. Uh, otherwise it fits. Uh, most of the applications, we are a drop in fit. We have not come up as an application where uh, we have been rejected uh, either because of uh, uh, size or weight. I understand, especially with the established OEMs, there are already manufacturing lines and processes and everything, specifications in place. So is that generally a roadblock for a new company like Chara? Correct. Absolutely. Uh, so we, we um, just to set things in context, we have about 75 customers who have signed up with us initially. They have placed orders for three to five motors and they're testing it and homologating it and all that. Eight customers have gone into serious production, which is placing an order for 500 to 1,000 motors. Um, and we have the larger companies like uh, we have in our uh, customer list is like VST, Greaves, Sonalika, and all that. But if you if we want the larger OEMs, you know, like uh, TBS or Mahindra or Bajaj, there is a little bit of reluctance to use our reluctance motors because it's new technology. Uh, it's new technology. They're risk covers. This, you know, we have to remember this is the heart of their machine, right? The motor and the controller. If something happens to it, they will be in big soup. So that, that is one problem. The second problem is what is called as a startup risk. You know, a large company cannot depend on the critical component on a, on a startup like us. Um, so there is a startup risk. And the la last one is, uh, the last reason is uh, that we don't have the long-term reliability and safety data for our motor. Uh, so I think that's why it's just a question of time. Uh, I think within uh, the next six months or so, we will sign up um, one of the large uh, OEMs and that will give us a big boost.
Right, right. So, uh, if I understand correctly, right now your customers are mostly from agricultural or industrial applications. Is that a fair assessment? So, we have fifty percent of the revenue from the non-highway, what we call as the off-highway vehicles, which yeah. is agricultural, industrial, uh, and uh, on-campus vehicles, as we call them. Uh, uh, the other fifty percent is from the uh, on-highway vehicles. Uh, one of the a three wheeler customer um, i don't think i can disclose the name uh, they already homologated homologation mm-hmm. is done which is a critical part right uh, mm-hmm. homologation is done they are going into production two large customers are going to homologation this month uh, all three wheelers uh, two wheelers will probably happen next year got it so uh, can you help us understand how does the controller integration factor into the overall motor performance uh, so the critical part of a reluctance motor as i mentioned before is the controllability part hmm. is in non linearity at that non linearity we have conquered and solved it by using powerful algorithms which is residing on our controller that okay. is why our motor and controller always have to go together our critical ip is in the controller the software okay. algorithms um so today we and we cannot sell a reluctance motor to you uh only reluctance motor to you because you cannot buy a reluctance controller in the world today it's still brand new tech uh, so we have to buy it together uh there are customers who like that we are giving the whole thing uh because they have one neck to hold off if something goes wrong literally uh, that's part is true i mean if you look at uh, the and this is no secret you get the motor from large companies like acg or dena or uh, or from a chinese company and you get the controller from curtis or uh, sterling gtech or any and we have to put it together and we believe that putting it together is a, is a little bit of an engineering uh, friction and it won't be optimal so our motor controller marriage will be optimal uh, now there are i think there is only one company a large company which whom we are talking to um uh, was raising concerns which you said that you know they they want to continue to use their controller and we basically said no uh, because it is a company which makes the controller by itself uh but uh, gets a motor from outside so you recently raised uh, you announced raising 52 crores in series a so what are your uh, plans for the deployment of this capital where is it that your current uh, focus focus of your r&d and also focus of your business commercialization efforts lie yep. so as you know priyakshi since we have spoken long time ago you have spent 6 years developing the technology the products building up our own factory tooling it up and we are ready to manufacture we are manufacturing now i would say most of our energy will go into business development sales and deployment uh we have spent a lot of time so we need to show revenue and eventually profits uh, but <clears throat> but we will <clears throat> sorry we will continue to invest in r and d we are building new products uh we will uh, we'll end up uh, we now our ma- biggest uh, motor we have is a 30 kilowatt motor running at 400 volts we are already planning a 45 kilowatt motor we'll continue to do that and more importantly we are an engineering company we'll continue to look at uh, newer technologies also um newer rare earth um, uh, free technologies too right and can you tell us a little bit about your current manufacturing setup Yeah. so uh, we are a company based out of bangalore our r&d and testing center is in a in a place called hsr which is mm-hmm. considered a startup capital now uh, in bangalore uh, our factory is in pindia one of the large industrial largest industrial suburbs in this country i believe very old one uh, our factory has a capacity to manufacture about 2000 motors a month um, uh, which is 25000 motors a year and um, our uh, within a Twelve to eighteen months, we will go to the next factory, which can do about hundred thousand motors a month. All right. So there are a bunch of well-funded companies all over the world. If you look at US, I think there are three of them. There's a comp- large company called Turntide, which was doing switch reluctance motors, but they're not doing that now. I think they have kind of lost their way and doing something else. In terms of startups, there is Conifer, which is uh, which is doing something somewhat similar to us, but they don't have all the details. Uh, then there is Electra. with the k um they are i believe are doing esm uh, externally excited synchronous motors that is in the us 
in the Europe, we have uh, AEM, Advanced Electrical Machines, uh, which are also doing, uh, we believe, very similar to what we are doing. I think everybody is converging to the technology which we are also using, synchronous reluctance motor with ferret magnet assist. I think this will be good for the next decade or so. And now, uh, large Indian companies have also woken up. Uh, Ola has announced, uh, Sona Comstar, Vivek was also telling that, uh, Vivek Vikram Singh, uh, mm -hmm. he was also telling that he will start looking at uh, the Railer 3 motors. Uh, so there will be more competition, which is good for us. So we had a funny problem before uh, March. Um, you know, you know, people used to ask, uh, why are the why are you the only one doing this in India? Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a problem, right? If you are buying a product, you want multiple vendors. So now, uh, now that question is gone. They, they know that a lot of people are working on it. And reluctance motor is a viable technology. So mm -hmm. that way, it is good. Competition always is good. I think. Yeah, it's it's a validation of the overall concept and overall approach as well. Yeah. Correct. Absolutely. Yes. And they, they will also get the comfort of uh, large OEMs, especially saying that at least the, there is more than one vendor uh, Correct. doing this. How soon can we expect to see a Chara powered three wheeler on Indian roads? Ah, Good question. Company in uh, Jalandhar has homologated uh, so they can go into production. It, usually the the time from homologation to deployment, you have to, they have to manufacture mm -hmm. and sell and all that. It's probably about a quarter. So I think next quarter, you will see the company from Punjab, the company from Kerala, the company from Bangalore and Greaves uh, will launch their vehicles uh, next quarter or mm -hmm. maybe a little bit after that. Moonrider got homologated, VST got homologated. So it's all, uh, it's all running in the races are on. Uh, and I think it's just a question of time where we will see. There's a company called Bulwark. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Already deployed our uh, uh, their loaders with our motors. Uh, Twenty okay. of them are already working in their customer fields. I think uh, next quarter or maybe a little bit later, we can't control it. You'll see a flurry of uh, uh, launches with our motors on uh, public roads. Uh, sure. So this is the first year where we are really shipping. Uh, last year we shipped about like. A uh, couple of hundred motors. So we generated a revenue of about uh, 2.7 crores last financial year. This year is where now the factory is tooled up, manufacturing. We are doing a few hundred motors a month. Uh, we have to go all the way to 2000 motors a month, which is our factory capacity. Uh, this year, we are projecting a book revenue, that is a uh, purchase orders of uh, about uh, 45 crores. Uh, we'll hit a good part of it and we have already received large orders this month as you can guess by all the customers I mentioned uh, right. and a shipped revenue of about uh, 20 crores uh, okay. so which means uh, uh, about uh, 2000 motors and 5000 motors 2000 motors shipped 5000 motors on uh, order in the pipeline <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Bhakta, for, for your time and wish you a very successful 2026 for yeah. all the effort the team, your team has put in over the last six years in R&D. Thanks, Priyakshi. Nice talking to you again after a big gap. I'll talk to you soon again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks Priyakshi. Bye-bye.